Many, many years ago, back in Nigeria, I used to see uh, on the side of taxis and buses there'd always be some something. They'd say it, there'd be a statement there. And one of the statements that I would see a lot was, no condition is permanent. And yeah, okay, it's, it's a very honest thing. Everything is changing all the time. And this applies to so many bits and pieces of the world we live in. So there's something that was there when you were this age, and then a few years later it's gone or been developed, or goodness knows what has caused it to change. And you had that here in Amsterdam. Uh, there's a place called Cryonest, which means the crow's nest. It has nothing to you don't see with it. Well, you do see some crows there, but it's, it's just an area in the southeast of the city. And you used to have... Uh, the way it was planned, they sort of put pedestrians on one level, cars and buses on another level, and the metro on a third level. So you had this strange intersection of um, these different levels on top of one another. And the result of that was a strange underground space, which uh, some people found frightening. I found it quite fascinating. I did take some videos of the graffiti there and other things. But in this space, um, on one side of it, you would have all these doors, and these doors would be these tiny little churches. These were all um, uh, primarily Ghanaian and Nigerian churches, uh, Christian churches, and they'd all have some particular, I can't remember, you know, sort of church of the rising crop. Maybe they didn't say that, but they, they all had a, a particular name. And I then had this video camera, and uh, was wandering around and first it was mainly the graffiti that I was looking at because it was quite exceptional and then a guy asked me what are you doing and I turned around and there was this guy and he was this sort of reverend and or a pastor so he didn't look like one but he was and we got into this conversation and this was probably on a Wednesday or Thursday so he said well why don't you come back on a Sunday and really get to meet the people and I'm not religious. I was brought up in a very religious way, a reasonably religious way, but at a very young age, I, I don't know, it just couldn't, it didn't work in my head. It could be that, you know, if you're in England and you're in church, then everything, and if you're Nigerian or if you're a black person, and you're in the church, in all the books, there was just no sign of black people. There's that one uh, king. And that was it. So I assumed that, well, this is clearly not for me, of course. Um, yeah, things change. Uh, so you had these churches, and this reverend, I'm talking to this reverend, he said, no, you have to come, you have to do this, and it's really good to open the mind, and blah, da 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 And uh, I knew from Nigeria what it was like to go to church on Sunday. or In, in our house, I'd often take my mom to church, and then <laughs> just drive around like a crazy person doing my own stuff and then make sure I could pick her up, or sometimes I didn't need to pick her up. But Sundays, were it wasn't that you didn't just go to church, it was this big event thing. And so it was in this place that no longer exists underneath uh, in Krynas. So I get there on the Sunday, and I uh, this was mini-DV kind of videotapes I was making, and I get there on the Sunday and I'm talking to the pastor, and he's all, you know, blinged out just as everybody else's, you know, Sunday best, you know that term Sunday best, people here were in their absolute best. Um, this is my usual, I'm just a sort of t-shirt, uh, comfortable trousers person. Um, but what was amazing is that I realized on that Sunday that you, you sort of had this huge, this space that was at least 200 meters long. It was quite a, quite a special space if I, yeah, I should do some of those videos. And um, you had all these doors and each door had a, a name, so these sort of double doors, and each door had a name of a particular church. So I thought there were lots and lots of rooms in there. But when I went there on the Sunday and I go in, I realized it's just one massive, massive, massive space. And it, you had the different churches next to one another with small gaps in between. And they had some weird system that all these services could continue at the same time. But then when one was singing, they, they sort of figured, it's almost like listening to birds. 
that they don't always tweet at the same time. It's as if you, this one tweets and that one tweets and this one. That. So that's how it was with, with this church service. You had this massive space with people who spent most of Sunday, at least three or four hours of Sunday just in the church. It's a free world. You have to do what you need to do. But I found uh, the numbers and the color and, sorry, it was a fly just said. I found the numbers and the color and there was, there was just something fantastic, especially when you'd have a shift. So one service would end and the people, so you'd have people on the outside waiting to go in so that this service would end and the next group would go in. And there was just the greeting because everybody knew each other. It, you know, the hair and all that was all perfect. I even saw some kids who reminded me of back in the day in Oxford, church meant a shiny face. I don't know what it is with why my mum thought Vaseline on your head was a good idea or Vaseline in your face. But honestly, I remember going to church always with a shiny face. And I saw a lot of kids there sort of glowing and beaming and and also the noise of the warnings from parents to children you will keep those clothes perfectly neat. All kinds of flashbacks came up because I remember Sunday being a terrible, terrible day where you um, I, you couldn't get any dirt on you. So it was almost as if you had to sort of not move at all, which is quite unnatural for a young person. Um, yeah, so that was that church thing. I think the other thing I can add, it's just that comes up now when I think of church and youth, is... Um, I remember in Oxford, the church, that we would disappear after a couple of hymns. The children would go off to Sunday school. But prior to that moment, I'd be there. And I would never close my eyes when it was time to pray. I was always looking at things and looking up at the church and looking at the light of people. And usually you find one or two other people who are also not, who don't have their eyes closed. And uh, if they're adults, then they sort of, it depends. The cool ones would kind of like, yeah, okay, I, I get it. And the other ones would try to force you to close your eyes, even though the only reason they knew your eyes were open is because their eyes were open, but that's a completely different thing. Anyway, church on Sunday, lots of color, completely different to the uh, Calvinistic or the um, sort of puritanical form that you, the, the, you see in many, many places. These are these were very brightly coloured, highly energetic churches, as if it was a celebration as opposed to a punishment. So I thumbs up for that side of it. Um, however, I have other things to do on my Sundays, and my belief system is I don't know. It's it's I I say we should all believe in what we need to believe in uh, without dogma. Hopefully, but keep out of that. Yeah. So that was a bit of the Sunday experience. Um, the place where it was has gone, vanished completely, no sign of it, no trace of that area. I go there sometimes and I remember, oh, I was standing here filming this, I stand here filming that, all gone. All I have is the footage and, of course, the memory.